Hello traders, welcome back to Simply Forex. Uh, I hope you had a lovely weekend, didn't do anything that I wouldn't do, so you can do what you like. Um, today is Monday the 10th of July, and as always guys, we're going to look back at Friday's trades, we're going to look at today's potential trades, and we're going to look at the important news for today as well. We're going to do everything. Um, let's start with Friday's trades. Um, so the first one was this guys, Canadian dollar. Um, against the Swiss franc, and we were looking to short this pair. Why were we looking to short this pair? Well, it was in an uptrend. Yeah, price came up here. It never broke this this grey resistance area. Yeah, sellers kept pushing this down until eventually, yeah, price broke down. If you're in an uptrend, guys, and you are just not getting higher highs like this, then chances are price is going to break down. And then sure enough, guys, it breaks down. We've got lower highs and then lower lows. All right. So it was in a downtrend. And there were more reasons to like this. We had a very bearish candle, yeah, as well. Um, and I like the fact we've got lots of room to move into. Yeah, I've put my target here to be a little conservative, but there's probably more room for this trade to move into as well. All right. And it will still be a trade idea for today, this. Um, so let's drop down to the H4. Let's have a look at the H4 because these grey zones are clearer on the H4. So we have our two grey zones mapped out, yeah, because price have reacted here. So it could potentially react here again. Yeah, and that's what I do with my grey zones, guys. If price has reacted historically at a level, chances are it will react at that level again. Yeah, that's the idea between, you know, of support and resistance. Or we had this grey zone here, guys. Okay. And as you can see, for me, guys, it just didn't retrace enough. There wasn't enough value. Yeah, we, we're starting to see some bearish candles. You know, maybe I missed this trade. Maybe it carries on. So be it. Yeah, I don't have FOMO. Neither should you. All right. But yeah, I was looking for a retrace because I want value, guys. And I will still be waiting for a retrace today. It may never come. But yeah, that's how I trade, guys. I want value. Um, so yeah, just the fact that we didn't get that retrace to come lower. For me, guys, yeah, I just didn't have a trade. There's not enough value for me to enter here. You know, so uh, Canadian dollar, Swiss franc. The direction was good. Maybe you guys did get in on this. Yeah, let me know if you did. I would love to hear about your trades. Um, but for me, guys, didn't retrace enough. Okay. Um, the second trade idea, and this it was a similar story here, guys, Euro, Aussie, dollar. Um, let's start with the day chart. So we were trying to buy this pair. Okay, so we're in an uptrend. Yeah, look how bullish that is. And then price has broken down. We've created a new higher low. And price, you know, was looking to take price up from here. You know, potentially back up to these highs, even further, guys. OK, um, yeah. And again, more reasons to buy this pair. We had a super bullish green candle. OK, so the idea was just to come back up to this first resistance zone. So that was the idea, guys. Again, if we drop down to the H4. So, you know, if you did get in on this trade, it would have been a tricky one, really, because, you know, we had this bullish H4 candle. You know, and you could be forgiven for entering on this candle. Yeah, you'd be thinking, right, that's that's off. Let's carry on this, you know, bullish momentum only to get a red candle like this. Yeah, look at those two crazy candles. And obviously, you know, most pairs react to the NFPs and the employment data that come out. So, yeah, that red candle was a bit of a reaction to that. Um, but again, guys, for me, it just didn't retrace you know, far enough. So I wanted a retracement down to here and then I could start looking for buys, okay? So for me, yeah, it didn't retrace enough, guys. If we look at the H1, what was that telling us? So yeah, again, you know, I wanted price to come back down to here, okay? But again, look at that, look at that bullish reaction, even breaking these highs, okay? But then straight back down again. So 
I would be interested in this trade still if we got back down to here. All right? But we didn't. The next one, guys, from Friday was Euro Canadian dollar. And this did give us a nice setup. Let's start with the day chart. So what were we trying to do with this? We were trying to buy it. Yeah, simple as that. So price, ever since it come down to this level, guys, you know, price was, you know, potentially trying to build up. You know, maybe we thought it was breaking down again. But then it built up. You know, this price action hasn't been easy to read. Okay, but then eventually, bang. Yeah, once we get this candle and breaks all of these highs and this grey zone, you know, we're only interested in buys now. Yeah, what was a bit, perhaps a bit confusing in here is now crystal clear. Yeah, we're looking for buys back up to this um, four, five or four, six hundred level, really. Okay, so that was the idea. And look at this bullish candle as well. So, you know, we liked everything about this trade for longs. And if we drop down to the H1 now, you know, this did retrace enough. Let me really zoom out so you can see the grey zone. So we've got our grey zone in here because price has reacted historically. And again, if price has reacted historically, chances are it will react again. Okay, and it did. All right, so if we zoom in now, yeah, we did get a nice candle here. Yeah, this bullish candle bounced off our grey zone, you know, um, and looked to take price higher. You'll still be in this trade, obviously, guys, because, you know, we haven't hit target. Um, so, yeah, enter here, put your stop below here, look to take price back up to that resistance level that we looked at on the day chart. Um, so, yeah, we so EuroCAD, that was a nice setup. Um, and this will still be a trade idea for today as well, guys, all right? So those were all of the trades from Friday. Let's take a look at today's trades now. Guys, if you enjoyed the recap, then why not come join us, yeah? Subscribe to the channel right now, guys. Um, also, smash the notification button. And also, everyone, please smash the like button, guys. Yeah, it really helps support the channel. Thank you. Um, so trade ideas for Monday the 10th of July. Before I show you my trade ideas, guys, let me just tell you what we do. So, um, guys, we've got a free Discord channel. So come join it. It's free. Yeah, the link is in the video description. On the free Discord, guys, we've got traders sharing their knowledge, sharing their trade ideas. We've got indicators, useful links, books, trading psychology, loads of cool things. So come join the free Discord channel. Secondly, guys, we also have a VIP Discord channel. Again, the link is in the video description. Um, if you join that, guys, it does cost some money to join the VIP Discord, uh, but you get access to me throughout the trading day. So you can ask me questions throughout the day. You get access to all of my trades. Yeah, I give you my trade ideas as and when they happen. We also have two other expert traders sharing their trade ideas. I give you exclusive content every week. Yeah, and you also get access to a performance coach so lots of cool things on the vip discord so come join that as well secondly we've got a mentorship program if you would like to be mentored one-on-one -on -one with myself then drop us an email and we'll send you all the information about the mentorship program the email is in the video description Thirdly, um, if you would like to support the channel, if you watch the videos, join us for the live streams, would like to show your support, then you can become a YouTube member. Um, it starts from as little as like under $2, guys, all right? So yeah, help support the channel. And lastly, guys, don't forget our live streams every day, Monday to Thursday, 8 a.m. New York EST time. Get your questions ready for me. Okay. So that's everything we do, guys. Um, right, back to trade ideas for today. Before I give you my trade ideas, I just want to show you this correlation, okay, between yen and the indices. So yeah, on the last few days, guys, we've seen a bit of yen strength. This is Aussie dollar yen. Yeah, and look at this yen strength, arguably even breaking down on the day chart. 
Okay, so Aussie dollar yen getting a bit of strength. Let's just look at the next yen bet pair, Canadian dollar yen. Yeah, look at this strength. Okay, yen strength. Um, next one, euro yen. Okay, not as big a uh, drop, but still we're seeing yen strength. So why are we seeing some of this yen strength? Well, it's to do with the indices, guys. So if we look at the NASDAQ, yeah, you can see that we're getting some bearish days. Yeah, potentially this could be a bit of a, you know, retrace for the NASDAQ. Um, let's have a look at S&P as well. So again, you can see the S&P dropping. So generally speaking, guys, if the, you know, the indices are not performing and they are dropping, then also the Japanese yen will gather strength and it, sorry, it's terrible, terrible why. The Japanese yen will gather strength and also drop because yen is a flight to safety currency. So if the economy starts dropping, it, you know, and is reflected in the indices, then the yen will gather strength because it is a flight to safety. Okay, so I just wanted to show you that correlation. If you're thinking, why is yen gathered a bit of strength? Then that's why, guys, yeah, because of the indices dropping as well. So, you know, something like US dollar yen and the S&P will be heavily correlated. Yeah. Um, if you look at US dollar yen, actually, look how, look at the yen here. Look at that yen strength here. All right. So, yeah, just wanted to show you that, guys. I don't have any yen pairs um, that I really want to trade, but I just wanted to show you that correlation. Now let's focus on my trade ideas, guys. OK, so the first one is this, guys, Canadian dollar, Swiss franc. And generally, this is what I'm seeing. So Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar, Bear with me, not easy to write with a mouse pen. US dollar, Canadian dollar. It looks like I've been drinking, guys, with this writing. I haven't. Yeah, US dollar, uh, sorry, and you, not US dollar. Let's take this one out. Um, the Canadian dollar, guys. So generally speaking, yeah, Aussie dollar, New Zealand, and Canadian dollar are a little weak at the moment. And generally speaking, Euro. Bear with me. Euro, pound, and even Swiss franc. Yeah, these are showing a bit of strength at the moment. Okay, so my trades are going to reflect this. Yeah, today. Okay, but that's generally what I'm seeing. Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, weakness generally, and Euro, pound, Swiss franc, strength generally. Okay, so. No surprises then that my first trade idea is Canadian dollar Swiss franc. Yeah, it was a trade idea on Friday. It's still a trade idea. We were in an uptrend. This level didn't want to break. That's always a red flag that structure could be changing. And then sure enough, it changes. Yeah, we got lower lows, lower highs. All right, so we're in a downtrend. Yeah. We've, we've had this, you know, this bearish candle was the catalyst, but even Friday's candle with this wick, yeah? So we can still take price back down to these this level here, even into this grey zone a bit further. All right, guys. So, yeah, that's what we're looking for um, on Canadian dollar Swiss franc. If we drop down to the – let's have a look at the H4 now. So I still need a retrace. Yeah, I still need some value. So you can see my grey zones, guys. Price reacted historically. This is a grey zone. Price has reacted in here. This is a grey zone. And price has reacted here as well. So let me zoom in. So, guys, we could start trading it from here. If we get a bearish reaction, actually, let's go down to the H1 now. Now, you could, now you've you know seen the grey zones. Let's drop down to the H1. So... First of all, guys, price could retrace to here, yeah, and then we want to see a bearish reaction, and we could take price lower. I think price wants to retrace a little bit further because, you know, we need value. Well, I say thing, I want, 
I want price to retrace a bit more, but it could react here, get a bearish reaction, we can enter. Ideally, guys, I want a bit more of a retrace, potentially up to here, yeah, and we get, again, a bearish reaction. When I say a bearish reaction, guys, I want to see sellers taking over, and that can be in the form of a structure breakdown, or it could be a very bearish H4 candle or a very bearish H1 candle. Yeah, this is what I'm looking for. If we get that, guys, we can then take price lower as well. Even price could retrace all the way up to here. But again, bearish reaction, we look to take price lower. So we've got some, you know, we've got some key levels here, guys, that we could short from. Just wait for sellers to enter the market. All right, so Canadian dollar, Swiss franc short. The next one is Euro Canadian dollar long. So Canadian dollar Swiss franc short and Euro Canadian dollar long are pretty much the same trade. Yeah. OK, so you're looking at Canadian dollar weakness and Euro Swiss franc strength. Yeah, they're the same trade pretty much. Um, so let's start with the day chart, guys. Yeah. And again, this was a trade idea from Friday. As you can see, guys, once after the price came down to here, you know, it was... Difficult price action, but now, bang, it's very clear price action. Yeah, we've had a break of these highs through here. Yeah, we've got a very bullish candle, this green candle. You know, let's take price higher back up to this grey zone. All right, back up to this 4,600 level. Um, uh, yeah, and you can see we've already, already had a bit of a reaction at our grey zone already. Um, if we drop down to the H1 now, what do I want to see? Again, I want to see a retrace. Yeah, I want to see price retrace back into this grey zone, maybe back to these um, H1 lows. But in here, we get a bullish reaction. Yeah, and then I can start buying this pair back up to here. All right. I mean, we could trade a break of this level. OK, but then, you know, imagine we get a candle that looks like this. Then there's not much room to move into up to our grey zone. Yeah. So for that reason, I really want to retrace and then come back up. But Euro Canadian dollar, we're looking to buy this pair. Um, guys, before I show you my next trade ideas, we've got two more. If you're enjoying this analysis and would like to receive my trade ideas every day, then subscribe to the channel right now. Okay. Also, guys, don't forget to smash the notification button. And also, if you're enjoying this, guys, if I could ask everyone right now to please smash the like button. I'll give you a couple of seconds to do it while I have a drink of water. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, and also, guys, don't forget all the cool things we do. Yeah, we've got the free Discord, VIP Discord, mentorship program, YouTube membership, and live streams every day. Right. Next trade idea is this. It is New Zealand dollar against the Swiss franc. All right. So let's take a look at this one now. We start with the day chart. Okay, let me remove this one. Yeah, if we start with the day chart, guys, what are we seeing? So, you know, we was, you know, potentially seeing a build up here. Yeah, we was thinking maybe we could take this back up to this grey zone. But no, price came shooting back down. And when, it, when we've broke these last lows, you know, we're in a downtrend. Okay. And then price has come back up, created a new lower high. All right. So you can see clearly we're in a downtrend. Sometimes if you're not sure about the structure, guys, get this pen out. This I think this is called Epic Pen. Yeah. And just draw in yeah, the structure. It will help you visualize. Yeah. So this for me is in a downtrend and the idea is to come lower. All right. If we zoom in now, you can see we've also had, you know, some bearish candles so this was bearish this is super bearish and this is also bearish yeah because of this wick i know it's a green candle guys but that wick tells me sellers are in control so the idea is just to take price back down to this level yeah because it corresponds with this last low here yeah 
Okay, but we could go, it's a little bit conservative, but it could come lower, guys. It could come back into this potentially down here. All right, so we're looking for shorts for all of those reasons. If we drop down to the H1 now, what do we want to see? So, yeah, there's a couple of ways we can trade this, guys. All right, so first and foremost, we want to, we could see price come back up to this level test these these last h1 highs but you could also see it's a good support resistance level we get a bearish reaction we enter the trade i would probably take some profit here let some profit run okay so that'd be the first idea or you know we can follow this h1 st structure down and we get a break of this level yeah once we get a break of this level we could start selling here put our stop above here and look to take price lower as well all right so new zealand swiss franc we're looking to short this pair there's more guys there's one more yeah let's take a look um new zealand dollar canadian dollar and this is now at quite an interesting level let's look at the weekly chart as well so you can see guys this is quite an interesting weekly level through here okay so it's at this level i don't like the bullishness of this weekly candle but this is a very nice level okay if we drop down to the day chart now you can see you know because of these wicks yeah we're starting to see a bit of a reaction at this level you know sellers are coming in just because of those wicks that's what it's telling me yeah there's so much information in the candlesticks guys and these wicks on this candle are telling me sellers are slowly coming into this market it might take a couple more days for it to break down a little bit but you know so be it we have to be patient with trading but there are sellers in here okay so we're just looking to take advantage of this you know potential retrace I'm going to move this to around, yeah, around this level here. Actually, probably around here. Okay, so this would be a target, guys. Yeah, it could. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at a few things when I place my target here, guys. Yeah, I can see there's a bit of, you know, potential support through here. I'm also looking at the moving average 20. So that might catch up to this level. Yeah, around this level, guys, even, you know, this this zone here. Yeah. Between these levels, guys. All right. I'm looking for a, a movement down to there. If we drop down to the H1 chart now, what do we want to see? Well, for me, we have already seen a breakdown in H1 structure. OK, so, yeah, price was pushing up, but then bang. Yeah, price comes shooting down. So it's broken these lows, even these lows. We now have lower lows on the H1. So we could trade this very aggressively. You know, once price is retraced in here, we could start selling. Yeah, we have to put our stop up here, but we could just start selling because we're with H1 structure and the fact we're below the moving average 20. Okay, so we could start selling straight away. That would be aggressive, okay? Or, alternatively, we could wait for price to retrace back up to here. It might not, but if it does and we get a bearish reaction, yeah, we could start taking price lower. Again, I'd probably take some profit here and then leave some money to run, okay? Or, there's more options, yeah? We wait patiently for a breakdown of this grey zone, yeah? Once we get that, we start selling, put our stop up here, and then look to take price lower as well. So a few ways to trade New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar short. All right, guys. So, yeah, those are all my trade ideas. I hope you've enjoyed them. If you have, please smash the like button right now. Thank you. Um, let's take a look at the news now. So news for Monday, the 10th of July. Um, there isn't any. See you later. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm joking, but there isn't any, guys. Yeah, Monday, the 10th of July. If we scroll down, as you can see, there are no three-star ratings for us to be concerned about. So you are free to trade today. 
Um, so yeah, no news, no big news today, guys. All right. So yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the vid. If you have, please subscribe, like, and share. I hope you have a great trading day, guys. And don't forget, I'll see you for the live stream, 8 a.m. New York EST time. Get your questions ready. See you later.